Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Gospel Forum Podcast. We are a collective of Reformation-minded Christians that care about doctrine and the local church. My name is Dan Sardinas, and I'm here with my brothers at Bethel Mennonite Church in Sarasota, Florida, and we're here to record another episode for you. But before we do that, we just want to make a, uh, an announcement, again, really the last one we will make about this. But coming up in just a few days, November 11th, is our conference uh, for 2023. And it'll be right here at Sarasota in Sarasota at Bethel Mennonite Church, so please come. The name of the conference is called Pursuing Holiness. You can go to thegospelforum.com and click on the link there to register. And you're going to want to do that before Friday night, November 10th, because at 9 p.m. Friday, November 10th, the prices will go up. Mm. Currently, it is $30 for individuals and $75 for families. But on the day of, and really the night before, it's going to go up to $40 for Ooh. individuals and $85 for families. And families is a, so anyone expensive. three or more in your family. So why would you want to Register pay more money? Now. Yeah. I don't know. Register and by family, now. we mean household. Household. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the same household. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, we're not talking about the same church here. I can see like 100 people coming from the same yeah, church. Yeah, right. This is my <laughs> brother and sister and cousin in Christ. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, it's going to be a great time. The Gospel Forum speakers, uh, guys will be there preaching. We're going to have breakout sessions. We're going to have a live podcast. And we're also going to have a Q&A panel. It's going to be a wonderful day. We're going to be having some food trucks. There's local restaurants to participate in or pack your own lunch. Mm-hmm. Whatever suits uh, your family best, then please utilize that option. And also, you're going to be receiving a book that we wrote Ooh, for just this right. conference called Pursuing Holiness. And uh, it's a devotional uh, book, um, kind of short chapters about what it looks like to be holy in the Christian life. And we're excited. And all of us here participated in writing it. So yeah. we can't wait to get this into your hands. If you're not going to the conference and still would like a copy, November 11th, you could find the book on Amazon and either Kindle format or paperback and you can order that through Amazon and we'll make sure to put all the links on the, our website and episodes and all that good stuff. All right, enough of that. <laughs> guys, how are we all doing today? Yeah, hey, good. Yeah, it's awesome. good to be here with you guys this morning. Welcome to Bethel. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having us. <laughs> sure. That's great. I am sleepy. Sleepy. <laughs> yes, right. there's never enough coffee, uh, especially with a three-month-old. Three-month-old. Uh, nice. Yes. Yay. Yes. So, is she, this your first time back since uh, you've had the baby? I think it is. Well, I think so. At least I, I haven't. So. Yeah, we haven't had Nick in a long time. It's been yeah. a while. It's been a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with that said, she sleeps through the night since oh. we brought her home. Wow. That's great. But you know, just dealing with some you know reflux stuff through the daytime, so. She cries a lot in the daytime. Yeah. So, but at least we sleep enough at night, at night. to deal with it in the daytime. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, right. okay. but she's really cute. Uh, we have. You're not a, biased at all. No, <laughs> no. Uh, Most but, beautiful baby ever. <laughs> typical dad. Talk. I agree. Oh, 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 oh. But she's got a lot of really cute Star Wars clothes that I keep sending oh. Dan. Yeah, photos I do of. like that. I do like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I do like that. Oh, that's so, great. So, really cool. Well, good. Well, guys, welcome. We're so glad. Uh, by the way, this is, of course, Sean yep. and Micah and Nick and Josh. Yep. And we're so excited to be here. So, join Josh us. Josh hasn't been in a while. I Josh know. has been a Josh. long time. Been well, in a while. well, last time we were at, at Providence Church and we recorded yeah. a couple episodes yeah, there about the AI and Christ centered preaching. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, definitely check those episodes out as well. Yeah. Well, good. Well, today, let's get right into our main topic for the day, guys. And today we're going to be talking about parenting. We've, been, we've had a couple episodes already that Micah has led us through on parenting series, helping parents. And so Micah, take us into this topic today and tell us what we're going to be talking about. Sure. Thanks, guys. Yeah. And just, a, just as a reminder, this, this has come out of our own uh, study that we did uh, as a church. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a, a parenting class uh, this last summer. Uh, where we went through all these issues and I uh, want to give credit. Uh, I don't know if I forgot to do it in our last episode, but I want to give credit to Capitol Hill Baptist Church. Uh, and a lot of this comes from, uh, uh, is taken from their own Sunday school classes that they mm-hmm. offer uh, to anybody, to any Course church. seminars. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which is really yeah. helpful. Uh, and also a big, a big uh, chunk of the idea of what we're going to talk about today comes from Ted Tripp and, and uh, his great book, if you haven't, uh, purchased it, read it, Shepherding a Child's Heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would all recommend that as a, a really foundational book on parenting. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but what we're talking about today is how do we uh, get to the heart of the behavior of our children? Uh, because we as parents, we have uh, a role that God has given us uh, to teach uh, the statutes of God's word to our children, to teach who God is, teach the gospel, to model that. Uh, and so we have to not only protect our children, uh, uh, but warn them, uh, lead them in obedience to good and righteous things. But as parents, uh, if we're not careful, we can fall into a ditch of just trying to get their behavior exactly right. Yeah. And man, if I can, uh, just, if I can line my kids up and they're <laughs> they're all perfectly dressed and they all say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, and they don't talk too loud and run around and uh, reminds me of the uh, the kids and the sound of music. You know, the dad would blow the whistle and all of them were like, well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great, but yeah. Maybe, not, <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. 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 So, you know, we, we, of course, want our kids to uh, be walking in obedience. We want them sure. to set a good example to other children that, and other families that we know. But how do we not fall into the ditch of just addressing their behavior mm -hmm. uh, without going to the deeper issues of the heart? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'll just, uh, why don't you guys share a little bit? What have, what have you seen maybe in your own uh, children's lives in, in ways that, you, uh, that you've counseled, but uh, have you seen, has this been a problem in your own life where you've fallen into this ditch? How have you come out of it? What counsel have you given? Sure, well, I, probably all of the above. Right. Um, when, um, when kids are little, it's easy because we're big and we can just overpower them. We can make them do what we want them to do. Um, and so sometimes I have and other parents have fallen into the trap of just do this just because I said, right? right. Yeah. Well, that might work when they're little. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they continue that into teenage years as a pharisaical kind of response. But so, at some point, my kid's going to be big enough that they're going to say, no, I'm not. And now what am I going to do? So um, resorting to just physical, I'm going to make you, eh, it might give some superficial results. But uh, in the long haul, it's not really what we want. So mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, one of my dad's favorite, say, like, to be clear, I did not grow up in a Christian home, um, caveat, but one of my dad's favorite say, sayings, because I said so, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, like, I get you're the authority, like, now, it's like, mm -hmm. I get that you're the authority, but but why do you say so? Like, mm -hmm. is, is this helping me, like, in any particular mm -hmm. way? It was, no, it was just arbitrary. I, he didn't want me to annoy him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think we could unnecessarily, you know, parents are given a warning to not provoke your children to wrath. Yeah. And I think by trying to do well and raise them up in the right way, we could do that wrongly, right? We could do so with improper motives. It could be that, you know, we don't want to look bad to other parents, mm. right? So it's a fear yeah. of it, man. it could be a fear yeah. of man. It yeah. could be yeah. an mm -hmm. image mm -hmm. issue. It yeah. could be, boy, I wish I had done this with a, when I was little, so now I'm going to make my kids do what I should have done. And kind of like live through them sure. and so that can have some damaging effects I'm definitely guilty of that no doubt um, I was a very young dad when I had my kids so a lot of immaturity in me and of course now you could always boy I wish I could go back and do things a little bit differently <laughs> I wish I knew then what I knew now what works and what doesn't work and um, but I think uh, I think like what we're Micah's gonna go with this today and we're um, which is really important is if your kids are only obeying on the outside, you have not won a victory mm -hmm. because that external obedience only lasts so long. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and there's no lasting fruit. And I mean, you could even look to your own life. I mean, you could fake it in your Christian life for only so long, mm -hmm. right? I grew up in a very legalistic culture um, and when I was a new Christian and we were faking it, right? We just did what we were supposed to do because that's what we were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But then that gets old after a while. Yeah. And so, again, if it's only external, if you're only having, um, if you're punishing your children instead of disciplining your children, yeah. um, you're, you've, you've lost. Mm -hmm. You know, punishment has no regard for their um, instruction. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like retribution. Like, you know, I'm going to, you know, get you back for doing this or you can't go to your friends for three months or whatever. 
um, instead of teaching them why it was sinful, why it was improper, why um, it's a sin against God um, for whatever reason, and showing them how and, and pointing them towards the gospel. Um, that's, that's what's important. And I like what you said there about faking it because even if our kids do act right, but it's not coming out of a heart that's wanting to please the Lord, right. then we are putting them in a position where they're either acting right out of fear because I fear what people think of me or I fear mom and dad, or from a place of self-righteousness, which yes. is what you saw the Pharisees doing right. yep. in the scripture. And so we want them to obey, but we want them to obey because this is pleasing to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah. I think that's how we're going to, this is what we want to get to, right? right. right. So, yeah. yeah, two of the things that, that come up for me in, in responding to your question, Micah, one is just how much I've seen that temptation myself mm -hmm. to be concerned about what other people think mm -hmm. of me. Especially right. as a pastor, based on, right? Sometimes. Yeah, especially as a pastor, yeah. 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 Based on the behavior of my children. And so there's a temptation there. And there's a season, I think, that I gave into that temptation mm -hmm. a lot. And um, what broke in me during that season was reflecting upon the fact of how gracious and merciful my father, my mm. heavenly father has been to me. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that really broke me in, in a season, I think. And I can't point out a distinct moment when that happened. So it's not like there was a crisis or anything like that, but just over time, the more that I began to reflect mm. upon how deep the father's love is for his children mm. and how he guides us and leads us, uh, I've tried to keep that at the forefront of my mind mm. as I'm shepherding, as I'm shepherding my children. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's good. One of the ways, uh, one of the reasons why is that it's not great to just focus on behavior is because behavior uh, is just a, a symptom. Mm. If you just treat uh, the behavior of our children, but you don't get to the heart, then you're not really getting to the disease mm. itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and and Paul Tripp, or sorry, not Paul Ted, <laughs> Ted His brother, yeah, <laughs> Ted, Ted Tripp says it's like having an apple tree in your yard that only produces blighted, gnarled apples. And so you fix the tree by buying new apples and hanging them on with fishing line. <laughs> so, wow. I like that. <laughs> I've heard tree, staples tree on glass. Nice. Yeah. I've heard that one, but I've yeah. not heard that. That's, yeah. So you're not changing the nature of the tree. Yeah. 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 You're putting on a show. And yeah. so uh, when our children disobey, when they act in a way that is not righteous, they are showing us uh, the behavior is telling us something about their hearts. Mm. And so uh, it's our job as parents to diagnose and to go to that issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, The heart is important because the Bible teaches that the heart is the control center of our behavior. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. our behavior reveals our hearts. Uh, Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And so our lives flow out of our hearts. Uh, revealing what we worship, what we fear, what we trust, what we hope in, all these things. Yeah. And of course, we know that Jesus said, uh, talks about this as well. Yeah. What what comes uh, within, out of man's hearts, it comes evil thoughts, sexual mm -hmm. immorality. He goes through that list. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's the first thing that we have to look at as parents, is that uh, the our, our children's attitudes, actions, behavior is a reflection of their heart. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus also uh, said, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. So yeah. why did you say that really nasty mm -hmm. thing right there? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. my heart. Yes. Right? My yeah, heart. I remember uh, one of the first times I read that, like when I first became a Christian, like, um, you know, I was working through this with, with someone at the time, and uh, they're like, like, yeah, look, it says out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what you speak is only overflow. How much mm. more is in there? Mm. And it just really convicted wow. me. I'm like, man, yeah. I really need to check my heart then. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jesus says uh, that's a lot of the Sermon on the Mount mm. focuses on the heart. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, you know, you've heard it said, you know, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her. Yeah, we're actually going through that right. literally right, right now yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. I, I said that backwards. You, you've heard it said, don't commit adultery, but I yeah. say, yeah. you know, whoever looks at a woman, and so again, he goes to the heart. You've heard yeah. it said, don't murder, right? Yeah. But I say, if you harbor a anger or bitterness in your heart, you've already yeah. committed murder. So Jesus goes right. to there because it's, the Pharisees were saying, oh, we're good. We haven't done this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. But then their hearts were still far from that. Mm -hmm. Now we're touching on something I think should be also very helpful to us, and that is 
we share something in common with our children, and that's that we are sinners. Yes, <laughs> yeah, <right>. indeed. <laughs> we don't we don't share that with our heavenly Father. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. while we reflect upon how our heavenly Father loves us, we have to acknowledge that difference. Sure. One thing that we do different in our parenting than what God does with us is we have to repent before our children at times. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think that's been a, a very impactful thing in my in, in our parenting. My wife and I, we've we committed a long time ago that when we sin against our kids, we're going to repent to our kids. Yes. Yeah. Repent yeah. before God and repent to our kids. Yeah. And we modeled that for them. Yeah. And so how else are they going to learn repentance if we as parents are not actually repenting when we sin against them? Right. Right. Amen. That could be the most impactful um, scars, actually, if right. we don't do that. Yeah. It could lead them down the wrong path later on. Oh, sure. Or lead them to, you know, tie fruit on the tree with fishing line. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, and, and and keeping in mind as we are uh, desiring to get to the heart of our children, that never means that we ignore bad behavior, mm-hmm. disobedience, yeah. and so that has to that always has to uh, be addressed. Uh, we our parenting is designed to control behavior, uh, but uh, we if we're not careful, we can fall into the trap that Jesus rebukes the Pharisees. Uh, for for honoring God in their behavior while rejecting Him in their hearts, and so when we fo- when we focus solely on outward behavior, we can in- encourage our children to become Pharisees. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some practical things uh, f- for anyone who's uh, listening, watching, what does this look like? Mm-hmm. Well, it can look like a couple of things. It can look like bribery, where you say, "Oh, if you'll be good in the store today, <laughs> mommy will buy you whatever," mm-hmm. and so you're hanging an apple. Uh, just a random penalty. All right, well, the next time you say, shut up, you're going to have to put a dollar in the jar. Mm-hmm. You, you, hang it, you hang an mm-hmm. apple. Or you can use guilt and manipulation. Mm-hmm. You say, well, it just makes me so sad when you disobey. You've now ruined daddy's day. Yeah. Uh, hang an apple. <laughs> uh, or fear, mm-hmm. fear of a man, where you say, that's it. I've had it. You're grounded for three months. Yeah, like you've been doing this all day. Yeah. You're not going to listen. <laughs> You're going to get it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or we, we mentioned like forced obedience. Yeah. Say you're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Share the toy. Yeah. You hang an apple. Yeah. And so we've got to control behavior, but mm-hmm. that's not the whole story. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Ted Tripp also says here, he says, what must you do in correction and discipline? You must require proper behavior. God's mm-hmm. law demands that. You cannot, however, be satisfied to leave the matter there. You must help your child ask the questions that will expose the attitude of the heart that resulted in wrong behavior. Mm -hmm. How did his heart stray to produce this behavior? In what characteristic ways has his inability or refusal to know, trust, Mm -hmm. and obey God resulted in actions and speech that are wrong? Mm -hmm. I remember one time working through a situation, one of my boys was having a squabble with one of the girls and uh, grabbed the toy and hit and having to pull my son aside and started to ask some of these questions. Uh, What did you do wrong? Well, I hit my sister. Okay, well, uh, why? Well, I wanted the toy. And we kept going down that line and finally got to the place where we could say, you know what, Uh, your heart was worshiping that toy, wasn't it? Instead of having a heart of generosity, you had a heart of self Mm -hmm. and me. Um, And I remember in that moment, my son breaking down and crying. He was very, very young, crying and saying, Dad, I just can't do what you're asking me to do because he saw his heart. Mm -hmm. And I said, I know, son, you need a savior. You need someone to help you. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us have a heart Mm -hmm. of generosity. And so trying to get beyond just go get your sister the toy back to yeah. what prompted this what brought this about yeah. now we've had to have that conversation hundreds of times <laughs> <laughs> since um and still working on it but you know what the uh, same thing god our father heavenly father does with us sean why did you do that what's in your heart yeah. um and so it's it's a long process it's much easier Smack my kid on the hand, mm-hmm. give your sister the toy. Mm-hmm. Now everything looks like it's fixed. Mm-hmm. The process of asking yeah. these questions and getting the heart, it's longer in the mm-hmm. moment, but it has much longer term right. benefits yeah. than just smacking on the hand. Mm-hmm. So, very good. Yeah. Yeah. The, the outward appearance, you know, imagery that's uh, been given already, like it, it reminds me of Jesus' words in Matthew 23 when he's speaking all the woes to the Pharisees. Mm-hmm. You know, he says, woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, 
but inside they are full of greed and mm-hmm. self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate uh, that the outside may also be clean. Mm-hmm. No- notice what he says there is like clean the inside so that the outside can also be clean. Mm-hmm. Um, you you had brought up uh, Matthew five, you know uh, it's Jesus doesn't you know say you have heard it say uh, you shall not commit adultery but I say to you you shall not lust. He's not saying oh, don't lust, but adultery is totally fine now. Yeah. Like that's that's not it. <laughs> no, he's saying no. Deal with your lust so that adultery doesn't occur. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Um, in a sense, he's all all Jesus is doing is bringing recollection and bringing to attention again the 10th commandment Mm because what is it you shall not covet your neighbor's wife Mm -hmm. well modern lingo that's just called lust Mm -hmm. right that's good i love that example you shared sean because that's uh that's a a really great example a practical example of how do we take our children from what they actually did and like you said work it back uh, work it deeper Mm -hmm. until they really hopefully by God's grace, really see where their sin Mm -hmm. is coming from. Um, And so I have examples, but I think that's a, I think that's a a sufficient, Mm -hmm. a sufficient example Mm -hmm. for that. So thank you. Can can I ask you a question as a new dad? Mm. um, So if you're, if you're in that moment where Mm -hmm. you're asking the question, uh, does the kid ever say, dad, why do you ask so many questions? (laughs) Uh, yeah, I think uh, my son was maybe with five that? at the time. And so obviously, if you're three-month-old, you're not going to be able to She's ask. She's not back talking right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I, I think over time, uh, it was easier for my children. They knew where I was going when I asked the question. And so sure. they're able to start to do some of that heart analysis themselves. Sure. So that I don't have to ask all the questions. We can pretty quickly get to the heart of the matter. So that changes too over time. Sure. And I think it's a picture the example it's a picture of the gospel where I can't change myself, right? I need mm-hmm. the Lord who mm-hmm. has died and conquered sin, conquered death to help me. And so mm-hmm. we want our children to keep coming back to the hope of the gospel. Um, and even yeah. even before they've they've professed that themselves, we want to keep pointing them there. That's what you need. That's what you need. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And to the point where they say, yeah, that is. Mm-hmm. I, I believe yeah. on that on that Lord. Um, that's our hope, ultimately, right. that they yeah. would believe right. it and begin Amen. to be transformed right. from the inside. Good. And, and, you know, and, and I think, you know, I think this kind of goes without saying, like, our kids, you know, are going to figure us out and then they're just going to give us the answers that they think we want, you know, but Mm -hmm. that's not our job. Like we can't see into their heart. Like that's why we entrust our kids to the Lord. Um, but there still is a parental responsibility in that. And this, I think really chisels away and really gets to the, the crux of the issue. Sure. So that's, that's a good example. I I liked it a lot. I had just one thought in connection with that is, you know, um, we can't lead our kids in this way if we're not doing that ourselves. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. We can't apply that to our children if we're not doing the same thing to ourselves. Uh, there's a book I read, I think Tripp might have been one of the guys that wrote it on this, and it was talking about uh, personal change and mm-hmm. seeing personal change. And he draws this simple diagram, a tree diagram. And basically what you've got is you've got the heat of life. That's difficult circumstances. You've got the thorns. That's your bad behavior, if you want to call it. You've got the roots. What's at the root of that bad behavior? And then you've got the gospel. What does the gospel mm-hmm. say? Right. Mm-hmm. And if you believe this, how does that how does that take place in your life? What's the fruit look like? And then what are the blessings that come? Mm-hmm. And so just sitting down with your situation and drawing a tree, <laughs> thorns on one right. side, mm-hmm. fruit on the other, heat, uh, rain, which is the blessing, and then getting to the root of it. And just, mm-hmm. just diagramming that out for yourself. Mm-hmm thinking through what the scripture has to say to those things. Mm-hmm. That process is, is tilling the soil of your heart mm-hmm. and, and planting the seed of the word so that those thorns in your life um, die and you can begin to produce fruit and that's teaching good. our kids to do the same. Yeah, that's good. And let me just add that all of this implies, parents uh, who are watching, that you have, you have a responsibility to shepherd your child's heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the local church is vitally important. Um, but the primary job of discipleship is with you, yes. not 
the youth group or the children's ministry or like the youth pastor or the youth pastor oh. or whatever. Those are all key parts of their development and their spiritual maturity, and they need that. But if you are just relegating all of that to your church, then you're 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 doing your child a great injustice. Mm -hmm. yes. And and if you don't know how to disciple your children, then find help. Yes. <laughs> you know, go to your elders, go to other godly parents um, in, in in your church, and ask for help. They'll, I'm sure they'll be glad to help you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, just don't say, "Well, I take them to youth group, or I take them to Awana, or they go they go they go to Sunday school." Or no, Christian school, or Christian school yeah. even, right? Yeah. Um, all this implies that you are taking the initiative to shepherding your child's heart, mm -hmm. not just leaving it to somebody else. Yeah, good. Amen. That's good. Good. Anything else to add? To I just say, what what encouragement can we give uh, moms, dads in this? Because this is hard work, <laughs> uh, and this requires consistency. Uh, and there may be some families that are seeing little fruit in this area, mm -hmm. and so how can we? Uh, encourage them in that. Hmm. Well, God calls us to faithfulness, not, I mean, it, we're not going to be perfect. And so, as Josh mentioned earlier, we repent when we've sinned uh, and we pick up the mantle and we go again. You mentioned a great resource, Ted Tripp's book on shepherding a child's heart. Uh, I've had to pull that out a couple of different times over the years and reread through it and be like, oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And see where I've sort of veered away from some of those principles I've learned. Um, and I think just your encouragement that. This is hard work. It's it's not for the mm -hmm. faint of heart. It's it's not something you do once and it just is done. Right. It's it it happens again and again. Um, but the beauty is and the hope is is that in the years to come, teens, twenties, thirties, you can see your children see have that blessing as Josh mentioned in their life because you've been pouring into them all of these years. Yeah. The other thing I would add as an encouragement is that you can do almost everything right. Obviously, no one's yeah. gonna do it perfect. You do all, everything just as faithful as you can, and your children's hearts are still far from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially that would be seen as they get older into their teenage years and their college years, right? And it could be so discouraging as parents to say, well, what happened? Remind yourself, you are not God. Yeah. You are not the Holy Spirit. And I think that's the temptation that we try to do in our parenting is we try not to shepherd our children's heart, but we try to change their hearts. Mm -hmm. And that's an impossibility. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of frustration comes in. And I speak from experience. When we try to change our children's hearts, we're, again, we're not thinking about things correctly. Mm -hmm. All we can do is give them the truth, give them the word, give them the guidance, keep them faithful to God, bring them to church, get them in a good local church, keep them accountable. But at the end of the day, God is sovereign even over your children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And that might be painful, yes. right? Um, especially yeah. if some walk away mm -hmm. or if some um, reject the faith or go into grievous sins. Um, that is greatly discouraging. So the only thing, encouragement I would give in that is uh, rem remember that you could still do everything right and have your children walk away. Yeah, right. And... Trust God, right? Believe the gospel. Um, and trust God's sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And uh, and never give up, right? So yeah. if, you're, if your children do go off the deep end or walk away, sure. just mm -hmm. stay faithful. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, remember, uh, remember Peter openly denied Christ. Mm -hmm. And yet, what happened with him? Jesus right. even said, no, this would happen. Right. And Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. Mm -hmm. Like, think about that. Yeah. Jesus prayed. Like, mm -hmm. like, and he prays for each one of us. Yeah. Like, as true believers, Hebrews teaches us this, that, that uh, he is the one who makes intercession for us. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, just think, like, I think it was McShane, he had a uh, quote, I'm going to really botch it, but he said, um, you know, imagine if Christ was praying for you in the next room. Mm -hmm. And he's like, distance doesn't matter he prays for you yet still mm -hmm. and you're like wow that mm -hmm. is yeah. beautiful and it's not just he's praying for me mm -hmm. but if your child is a true believer but mm -hmm. does walk away for a little bit keep praying keep, keep praying, yeah, keep praying right. but know that jesus is also praying for them mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's comforting words
Yeah, I, a couple of words of encouragement I, I think of on the end here is one, um, nobody has it all together. <laughs> there, there's a even whenever even whenever it looks like it's well done, right? Um, there's always a struggle. Sure. Don't buy the lie that some people have it easier than others. Um, it's a it's a battle that's hard fought mm-hmm. for victory. But I, but I'll I'll leave it at this. Um, this word is not is not specifically in the text to parents, but I think it applies in any circumstance in life. And it's in Galatians six nine. It says, let us, "Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up." Amen. There is fruit for our labor. Yes. Yes. That fruit That's might good. not be the fruit we expect, <laughs> right. but there is fruit for our labor, and God yeah. has called us into it, and He will bless. Amen. Our That's good. That's good. That's great. That's great. Anything else, Mike? No, I think that's. I think that's good. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, good. that's good. Well, guys, thank you so much for the conversation, and thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X, whatever they call it now. <laughs> but uh, and uh, is there is there a new thing that might be associated with the Gospel Forum? That we are our own not for profit. Oh, yes. <laughs> is, is there a way, like, you know, I don't know, people just give or I anything don't... like that? We were going to give some of those details at the conference, but oh. Nick has brought well, it up. Well, we can uh, also edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, we are now a recognized not-for-profit uh, in the state of Florida. And so if you'd like to donate some tax-deductible... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do have a donate button on our website. <laughs> But no, we, we do this to encourage the local church. Sorry for blowing um, the cover, guys. <laughs> but anyway, good. Well, good. Well, anyway, we we'll hope to see you on November 11th. And if not, we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching and subscribing. This has been another episode of the Gospel Forum Podcast. And until next time, keep, keep on reforming. reforming.